Welcome to our webinar, How Atlassian Does DevOps. Now I'll pass the baton on off to our internal experts. Tanguy will show you how his team build, ship, and run one of our product, HipChat. Bonjour, Tanguy. Hi, so my name is Tanguy, and I'm a product manager in the HipChat team. Uh, before we dive into the details, I would just like to introduce you a bit to the HipChat team so you understand a bit where we're coming from. So we're distributed over three major cities in uh, three different time zones. We have staff working in the office, others working from home from time to time, and others are fully remote, so working from home all the time. The different time zones make it quite hard. Uh, in some parts of the year, we only have about an hour of overlap between Sydney and Austin. So we have to make this time count. And also because of this, uh, we've decided to split the HipChat team uh, into smaller teams with relative autonomy. What we do is that at a global level, level we uh, agree on uh, objectives and key results. So for example, we'd like to grow the number of active users or increase conversion rates for people trying HipChat. And then we also agree on uh, initiatives to reach these goals at a very high level. For example, let's focus on building a new uh, Jira integration with HipChat to help Jira users make the most out of HipChat. The rest is then really up to the teams to figure out how they get there, how they reach these objectives and key results. So there is very minimum uh, admin slash management overhead, and it's limited to goal tracking, which is usually monthly and quarterly. So now I'll, I'll walk you through how the HipChat team uh, in Sydney plans, uh, designs, builds, and, and ships software. Uh, we use a full DevOps approach because that works for us, but maybe not everything we're going to discuss today will apply to you. And in any case, I'd suggest implementing this approach gradually. So let's uh, start with how we uh, gather feedback. Feedback comes from a lot of different places. Um, and what we've done is we've decided to listen to users' feedback as a team uh, directly from the source. So it's not the product manager's role to uh, gather feedback uh, from customers. Every team member participates in that. This multidisciplinary approach, which is uh, dear to DevOps, is something that we've decided to implement straight from the source. So for example, we receive feedback uh, from uh, customers in, uh, in product via uh, NPS surveys, so Net Promoter Score, uh, via user voice and uh, Jira tickets, as well as uh, from social media, Twitter or Facebook. We also gather feedback for monitoring systems, uh, which tell us how our system is performing, but also uh, the user experience side of, of, of this health with uh, things, for example, like AppDex, which helps us measure the performance of a system as felt by a user. So th this all goes into um, uh, HipChat as individual um, uh, messages and notifications. And what we do is we use HipChat uh, as a way to triage as a team everything that's coming through. And all the noteworthy feedback is then converted into uh, Jira tickets which sit on the uh, untriaged backlog. And so we spec these out uh, in confluence uh, afterwards. So for example, um, today when you paste a link to a Jira issue uh, in HipChat, HipChat gives you a bit more information about the issue right in chat to avoid context switching too much. Uh, this feature was requested from a couple of sources. Uh, first from Twitter, uh, which is a, a great way for your teams to receive feedback about how your users use your software and also from a uh, user voice. Uh, this was a ticket which received quite a lot of votes. So the way this looks for us is um, we'll receive these tickets inside HipChat rooms. Um, then usually we discuss them and it le it's usually ends up in with the creation of a Jira uh, issue which then sits on the backlog. So the whole team uh, can discover user requests as they come in and help shape the backlog. So we've talked about how we gather feedback. Uh, now let's talk a bit more about how we uh, actually plan uh, um, um, uh, how we ship features. So each team in HipChat is uh, basically free to use the methodologies that better suits their style of working. In Sydney, we um, uh, are adept of uh, Scrum and we use weekly sprints. We really want to measure success uh, very incrementally. Uh, once a week, we meet for about an hour as a full team and we go through uh, first, a demo of what was built the previous week. Second uh, is a review of the objectives uh, uh, that we decided on the last sprint and whether we achieved them or not. And third is define objectives for the next sprint. 
So when I say objectives, it's not individual tickets. It's basically units of work which have to be demoable in some way, shape or form at the end of the sprint. It could be things like uh, we want to have this feature shipped into production or we want to have this feature ready to review by the rest of the team. After the planning meeting, we uh, break out and uh, developers then go through the backlog and pick issues which will help them achieve the objective discussed in the planning meeting. So instead of discussing individual tickets during the planning meeting, we discuss objectives and then each team member goes and picks from the backlog what uh, will help them achieve these objectives. What we gain from that is uh, first buy-in from, from everyone in the team. So everyone is involved in defining what's in the sprint and how they basically are going to achieve the goals that they agreed on, on taking on. Two is uh, because of weekly sprints, we can easily measure velocity and, and see how we're progressing. And three is we can uh, very uh, quickly realize when an initiative is going off race and what we need to do. For example, uh, killing an initiative if uh, it's basically taking much more time than what we thought originally and is not that important in terms of reaching some uh, key results. But planning and, and building are not separate activities. They really go hand in hand. So what we uh, do relatively often is we uh, try to spike early and often uh, to validate ideas, identify early blockers, and guesstimate the size of an initiative. So what we do is we'll, we, we break out the constant rhythm of uh, sprints with a spike or innovation weeks, where everyone uh, basically just builds something end to end uh, uh, and trying to identify what the bit blockers would be to build a feature for real. What we get out of that is uh, estimates, which are T-shirt size. So it could be uh, small, medium, large, X large, or what we call Godzilla. Um, the new JIRA integration that I talked about uh, earlier uh, to uh, get more details on a pasted JIRA link would have been a medium and was basically spiked uh, in one of these innovation weeks. So let's now talk about a bit more how we actually build and test software. We, we can't really talk about these uh, categories uh, uh, independently. They really go hand in hand. So we use uh, Bitbucket and we use Git. We are heavy users of uh, continuous integration via feature branches. So uh, let me break this down. The, the typical process is that even for a small change, uh, you would create a branch linked to a Jira ticket. You would make your changes and the build is configured to run tests on each feature branch. When you've done your changes and you're happy with them, you then create a pull request to merge your branch back to master and you need to select a minimum of two reviewers. So what we found is that this uh, process was much more productive than uh, doing massive call reviews every once in a while or to do even developer pairing. So if you have your ticks for a small change and a green build, then you're good to go and ship uh, uh, back to master. Now the master branch is what we use to ship to production. We want to be able to ship HipChat to production at any point in time during the day. So this means that uh, master has to be green all the time. All builds have to pass on master. Whenever we have a problem there, right? When, so whenever we've got a, a red build, uh, it's all hands on deck. So the whole team stops and tries to fix the build. But this will be covered by Mike uh, in more details later on in this presentation. So, um, let's now talk about uh, how we deploy changes once they've been implemented. Uh, we believe that an important part of the DevOps culture for us is, is um, ownership and responsibility. The way we've translated that in the way we work is that in the HipChat team, if you implement a feature as a developer, you are the one who is going to ship it and monitor it until you are sure it works as expected. And then the team which is responsible for uh, writing a feature is also the team which is responsible for running it. Now, I, I know this may seem a bit crazy and I've worked in environments where deployments were big and far apart and, and giving this level of responsibility to every developer would have been frowned upon. But, but in fact, the whole team is much more productive when everyone has skin in the game. So for this reason, we needed a system to help us stay on top of what everyone is doing, as you can imagine more than 100 developers 
uh, uh, all together uh, wanted to ship at the same time would can become quite chaotic. So for that, we, we use HipChat and we build uh, specific HipChat add-ons to help this process. What you see on screen right now is, is a particular add-on that we built, which lets us lock a particular component for deployment, uh, which is a very simple way to let everyone know, hey, uh, this component is currently mine, I'm deploying for it, don't touch it. Most of the deployment is automated, and we use both uh, Chef and, and Puppet. We've actually been working with Puppet to help us go uh, even faster and let us control deployments directly from HipChat rooms, and you are able to start using their uh, integration today. Because of this automation, we're able to deploy very often. In fact, uh, we tend to ship our changes to production up to five times a day. Right, so, so remember earlier on when I s explained how we use Git and, and create feature branches for small changes? Well, these small changes are the atomic unit for our deployment. So instead of shipping big things every once in a while, we ship small things very often. What this help, helps us do is, is reduce the number of issues. Makes, it makes diagnosing issues much easier. You know what issues will be coming from. And it's very easy to roll back a particular change. So um, not all features are created equal. Uh, in some cases, we uh, sometimes we just can't agree on the best way to tackle a particular problem. Um, uh, and in this case, uh, instead of just sitting in a room and arguing it uh, day in and day out, what we do is we rely on experiments and we use A-B testing. So we implement variations of specific features and deploy them to different user cohorts. So for example, cohort A uh, is a group of users that would see a specific version of HipChat, while cohort B will see a different version which is slightly different at the same time. And what we can do is, is measure the difference based on what we uh, think uh, this particular feature is going to trigger in terms of behavior. And that helps us val validate it. So instead of arguing it in a room, what we, what we do is we let the data tell us which version we should keep. Uh, so, so for example, um, we are trying currently to figure out what are the triggers that make users install add-ons and, and integrations with other tools. So some of you may have seen uh, this particular screen when creating a new HipChat room. This was uh, only out to about 5% of HipChat users for about a week. We've actually deployed about 10 variations of the same experiment in the past month. So typically, as we discussed, we try to keep changes small and it helps us iterate very fast. But, and, and even when we uh, implement a big feature, we tend to start really small and, and iterate. However, in some cases, uh, we decide to keep some features hidden until we feel that they're mature enough. Uh, and sometimes we even just use them internally uh, with dog footing uh, uh, for a while. So some features are riskier than others to ship. Uh, for example, we know that they're going to introduce additional load on the system, or uh, as for uh, HipChat Connect, which we've uh, uh, released recently, uh, it, sometimes they actually radically change the user experience. So in this case, we really want to be cautious and take it step by step. So what we do is we can decide to ship a feature to a small percentage of our users, gather feedback, fix issues as they arise, and progressively ramp it up. So for this, we use a, a tool called LaunchDarkly. And what we can do is to decide Let's ship that feature to 5% of users. See how they uh, use, use it, gather their feedback, make changes, ship them, roll it out to 10% of users. OK, so that's uh, we're done, right? We've um, uh, found features, uh, for the, like discuss feature requests. We've uh, built these features. We've shipped them. So hey, we can just go and celebrate, right? Well, fortunately, it's not that simple. Uh, shipping a feature is, is really just the beginning for us. Uh, what we do is we do measure absolutely everything. So every user action translates in an anonymous analytic event, uh, which we use to make decisions on how to enhance the user experience. So basically, like in simple terms, what we want to do is to prove that when we said a feature is going to do something, it actually does it. So we want to prove the feature moved the needle and makes our users' lives better for what we wanted to improve. And if it didn't, and that's the case very often, and the data can be very brutal uh, on that front, uh, we do iterate until it does and until we move the needle in a way that, that, that we want it to. To do that, we basically use the techniques that we've described earlier.
iterate, build, ship, and look at the data again. Because of everything we've discussed earlier, we can, we can do that on a, on, on a daily basis. Submit a feature, let it sit for a few days, come back to it, make changes, and a couple of days later have a new version out. But sometimes uh, in a cloud world, uh, shit happens. Uh, and we know that glitches have the potential to impact all our users. And, and these users depend so much on HipChat running like water. So we have to make sure we communicate the status of our service, as well as the progress of the resolution of any incident to them. So for that, we use status page, which is uh, quite well integrated with HipChat as well. But that's a whole other topic. And Nick uh, is going to walk you through how we handle incidents at Atlassian uh, later in this presentation. Thank you for watching our webinar on how Atlassian does DevOps. If you want to get the Atlassian tools to practice DevOps, click on the green Go button on the left. To check how to run IT support the DevOps way, click the video on the right of your screen. To continue on the next section of this webinar, click the See What's Next button on the bottom right of your screen. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.